Hi everybody, welcome back to another installment of Chapter 8 in Statistics. So we're in Section 8.5. We've been doing hypothesis testing. We have done um, hypothesis testing for a mean, when we don't know standard, uh, population standard deviation, um, for a proportion. Now we're into our chi-square test. Remember, chi-square goes back to Section 7.4. Go back and review. Remember, we found chi-square left and chi-square right when we were doing confidence intervals. So we've done this before. Bear with me. I've got my chi-square table as I look things up. So remember, that table is table G and appendix A. In, school, in class, students have a golden colored sheet. And I did put this little reminder. We're so used to our Z table and T table giving us the area to the left. Remember... That's the thing. We got to watch out since the area is always to the right. If it's left tailed, we have to subtract from one. So watch out for those because it is a little sneaky and it's different than what we've been doing. So here's our three cases for our one or two tailed tests. So for a right tailed test, in order to find our chi square critical value, CV, we use alpha and degrees of freedom. Everybody knows degrees of freedom is n minus one. For our left tail test, because everything is shaded to the right, we use 1 minus alpha. And for a two tail test, remember we've got, it could be, it's a not equal for our alternative hypothesis. And we've got either high or low values depending on the sample that we use. So we have to use alpha over 2. We have to split that alpha between the two ends. To find our right critical value, we just use our alpha over 2. To find our left, we do 1 minus alpha over 2. So when it's left, you always subtract from 1. If it's two-tailed, you have to split up your alpha. So grab your chi-square table. Let's do a couple quick checks on this. So let's say we've got a right-tailed test. Right-tailed is the nice one, right? Because technically the area is always shaded to the right. I cut off the picture at the bottom, but it does have that at the bottom. It says we've got a right-tailed test with 15 degrees of freedom. I didn't even tell you that n equals 16, and alpha is 0.025. Let me just scooch this down here so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to highlight my degree of freedom of 15. I'm going to highlight my alpha equals 0.025. And it looks like I'm going to end up with a 27. I'll put CV equals 27.488. So this critical value is the same critical value we've been using in every other hypothesis test. We just get it a different way. So let's look at letter B. I take these. I'll just move these guys. 27 degrees of freedom. 20, whoops. 27 degrees. Oh, my goodness. Try one more time. I'm just trying to move this. Here we go. 27, I'll just put it down here. I'm struggling. How about this? There we go. 27 degrees of freedom. Sorry, technical issues. So right here is 27 degrees of freedom. Now it's a left tail test, right? Alpha equals 0.05. Left tail comes off the left side of the table, so I have to do 1 minus alpha, so I'd look up a 0.95, and then I'd highlight my 0.95, and it looks like those two guys intersect for a critical value of 16.151. So I'll write this down over here, critical value, 16.151. If you're not getting the same critical values, Let's talk about it. Let's figure out what's going on. All right, last but not least, I've got a two-tailed test. I better make it so I can see my whole table. With a degree of freedom of 9. So here's my degree of freedom of 9. And remember, two-tailed test means I'm splitting up that alpha. So I need to do alpha over 2. It's 0 0.01 divided by 2, so that's going to be a 0.005. For my right-tailed, I'm going to use that 0 0.005. For my left-tailed, I'm going to do 1 minus that. So I'm going to look up a 0.995. So... 
for my right critical value. I am looking up this very last column. I think this is my last column right here. I believe it is a 23.58, I think that's a nine. So the critical value equals 23.589. For my left critical value, I'm looking up a 0.995 with my degree of freedom of nine. That looks like a 1.735. And then that's what we're going to use within our hypothesis test. All right, so using that table, I'm hoping that you remember how to do this. That would be helpful. If not, again, you need to go back and look at section 7.4. So just looking at the pattern, when you're looking for a right-tailed test, your values will come out of the right side of the table. When you're evaluating your left-tailed test, finding your left critical value, that's going to come out of the left side of the table, and you always have to subtract from one from your left tail. If it's a two-tailed, you're going to do your elf over two and still subtract from one for your left critical value. All right, so now we know how to find the critical value. Now we need to find out how to find our test statistic, right? That is going to be our comparison. So to find our test statistic, chi squared is equal to degree of freedom times your sample uh, variance all over your population variance. Now, if I gave you your sample standard deviation, you would know to square that, right? Because S is sample standard deviation. Sigma is population standard deviation. N minus 1 is degree of freedom, if you prefer to write that in there instead of N minus 1. So DF, degree of freedom. Whichever one you like to use in that uh, first part of your numerator. N is the sample size. We all know that. S squared, remembers your sample variance. If I just give you S, I'm giving you your sample standard deviation, and you literally square it. Sigma squared is your population variance. If I just give you your population standard deviation, again, you square it. So let's talk about hypothesis testing, traditional method. It is the same steps as the whole chapter. So step one, we still state the hypotheses, identify the claim. What's your H sub O? What's your H sub 1? Step two, we find our critical values. So we go to our chi-square table, right? Just like we've been done for every other one, we just go to a different place to find it. So chi-square CV. I'll just put chi-square table. How about that? Step three, we're going to calculate our test statistic. I don't like that test value. Let me cross that out and put test statistic. Because that's what we called it just above, right? Let's calculate our test statistic. So remember, statistics come from samples. So we've done a sample and we figured out what our data is. And therefore, we can um, com compute that. So step four, then, comparing your test statistic to your critical value, you have to make your decision. Are you going to reject or not reject H sub O? Remember, it's always H sub O. You're never going to mention H sub 1 in your step four. And step five, based on your claim and whether you reject or not reject, you are going to go to that little table and summarize your results. Notice, we have written these steps down several times. We've talked about these steps several times. Everything's the same except for where do you go to find your critical value? What formula do you use to calculate your test statistic? So step three is that formula just above. Chi-square equals your de degree of freedom times your sample variance divided by your sample or by your population variance. All right. So now, let's do a quick test. Let's make sure everybody's good. Notice traditional method. That's what we just talked about. A teacher believes the variation in scores over 23 students is less than the variance of the population. The variance of the class is 180 or 198, right? So this is our sample variance. So that's going to be our S squared because the class is her sample. The variance of the population is 225. So this is going to be my sigma squared. Is there enough evidence to support the claim at alpha equals 0.05? So let's start off with our H sub O and our H sub 1. 
So we don't write mu equals, right? We write down our variance. So our sigma squared equals 225 because h sub o is always equal. She believes that the variation of, in scores is less than the variance of the population. So she thinks it is less than 225. I just noticed right here, we know our sample size, right? There's 23 students. So the claim is H sub O. The teacher believes that the variance is less. Oh, I forgot to put a squared on there, sorry. You're probably wondering where that went. So if I'm thinking about this in terms of what this looks like, right? There's our variance curve. It's less, so it's got to be a left tailed. So this would be my shaded area. That shaded area is my alpha of 0.05. But I want to know what this dividing line is right here. I want to know what this critical value is. So step two, we find that critical value. It's left tailed. So that's important. So we're going to go to our chi-square test. So left tailed degree of freedom is tw uh, 22, right? Because our n is 23. If it's less left tailed, we subtract from 1 because we have to get that off the left side. So 1 minus my alpha would be 0.95. So I'm going to go to my chi-square table. I'm going to do a de degree of freedom of 22, and I'm going to look up a 0.95. It looks to me like it's a 12.338. I'll put critical value equals 12.3, what did I say? 38. This critical value is a chi-square left just in case you were wondering. So this value right here is 12.338. Anything less than that, remember this is zero. This is the origin. This is going to positive infinity. So anything less than 12.338 is going to be in our shaded rejection region. Anything larger than it is going to be in our non-rejection region. So that tells us that we need to compute our test value so chi squared is equal to, that formula said, it's degree of freedom, or n minus 1, times our sample standard or sample variance divided by our population variance. So degree of freedom, 22. Sample was 198. Notice that's sample variance, so it's already squared. My population variance is 225. Do a quick calculation, verify that you end up with something similar. Let me do a quick calculation as well because I forgot to bring my calculator with me. So 22, whoops, hopefully you're calculating too. Divided by 225, that's going to be, oh, a 19.36 or a 19.360. Six, zero, came out to a nice neat. I was wondering why I was missing a decimal. So let's think about this. 19.3, knowing that zero is at the origin and it keeps going in the positive direction for chi-square, 19.360 is going to be somewhere around here, right? 19.360. So for our decision in step four, are we going to reject or not reject? It's in the non-rejection. Remember, anything shaded is reject. Anything not shaded is do not reject. So do not reject H sub O. So if we do not reject H sub O, but the claim is H sub 1, there's not enough evidence to support the claim. Sorry for the writing, but... I always tell you, if you have to write it, I probably should too. There's not enough evidence to support the claim that the variance is less than 225.
Remember, I'm looking for the context as well. So don't just tell me there's not enough evidence to support the claim. This says summarize, right? I want to know what's the story. What is there not enough evidence to support? I need to hear what you've got to say. I know people get lazy along the way. All right. So now comes the fun part, right? This is if we're going to do a p-value test. We need to know what the p-value is. This is a very, again, a very imprecise. We're going to have inequalities for our answers here. But this is the best we can do. Remember, p-value is the area under the curve. So if I've got a right-tailed test where n equals 9, so my degree of freedom equals 8, so I go to my degree of freedom. Right-tailed is good. We do not subtract from 1. So I'm going to go to degree of freedom of 8. And then I'm going to trace across. I wish I had brought my table with me. I'm going to trace across. I thought I had, but. Um, and I'm going to find 19.274. Well, 19.274 is in between a 17. You know what? Let me grab this table back here. Let me copy. Whoopsie. Let me grab this so that I can highlight it as we go. All right. So I'm going to go to my degree of freedom of 8. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to trace across, and I'm going to find 19.274. 19.274 is going to fall in between these two values, which means it's going to fall in between these two values, these two p values. Notice this is larger to smaller. So when I write my inequality, I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to say that p is somewhere in between a 0 0.01 and a 0 0.025. There is my p-value. Again, very imprecise, but it gets us an answer, and then we can compare that, remember, to our alpha. So let me move this stuff out of the way. Let's do this second one, because I'm betting the second one is a left-tailed test. So again, still larger to smaller. So left-tailed test, n equals 23, so degree of freedom is 22. And... X, uh, my chi-square is 3.823, so 3.823 falls in between. Whoa, it's too little, right? It's somewhere in between this 8 point whatever and over farther, higher confidence level. So here's the best I can say. If this is larger, going to smaller, all I can say is that my p-value, according to this table, is 0.995 or larger. 995 or larger, which means since it's a right tail, or sorry, since it's a left tailed, I have to subtract that from 1. So I know that my p-value then has to be 0.005 or smaller. So less than 0.005. That one was a trick one. I wanted to make sure I did one that fell off the table. All right. So last but not least, I've got a two-tailed test. N is equal to 24, so I know my degree of freedom is 23. And my chi-square value that I'm looking for inside the table is 12.733. So N is 24. So degree of freedom is 23. I'm looking for a 12.733. That's going to be in between these two values, which means it's going to be in between these two values. It's coming from the left side of the table, right? So that's important to know. So according to this, my p-value is in between... Um, 0.975 and 0.95, but based on this test value, we know that it turns out to be on the left side of the graph or of the table. Left side tells me I have to subtract from 1, so I'm going to do 
0.975, 0 0.95. I'm going to subtract both of those guys from 1 because it's a left chi square. So I know that my p is going to fall somewhere in between a 0 0.025 and a 0 0.05. Now that value, since it's two-tailed, we have to compare to alpha over 2. Remember, our alpha got split. Sometimes I like to compare to alpha over 2 because I know what the picture looks like. Some people like to double the p-value instead because it's at either end. So whichever way makes more sense to you, because I'm visual, I like the alpha over 2 comparison. All right, so let's run through a p-value. So a researcher knows from past studies that the standard deviation of the time it takes to change a car's oil is 16.8 minutes. That sounds to me like a sigma. Notice it does say standard deviation. Be very careful. We know that's just sigma, not sigma squared. A random sample of 24 cars, N, is selected and inspected. The standard deviation of the sample S is 12.5. At alpha equals 0.05, can it be concluded that the standard deviation is lower? Oh, it sounds like a claim to me. So let's do our H sub O and our H sub 1. So remember, we can do, we typically do sigma, but this, or sigma squared variance, but this one tells us sigma. So I'm going to just do sigma equals 16.8. And we are saying that our standard deviation is lower. So sigma is less than 16.8. Looks like a left-tailed test to me, right? So we need to compute our test value because that's what we're looking for. Those numbers that we are searching for in the table, that's what we are, where we get these from. So chi-squared is equal to our degree of freedom, so 23 times our sample standard deviation. So that's going to be 12.5, and remember, it's... Um, variance, I said that wrong, so it has to be squared, over our population variance, so 16.8 squared. Do that math problem, you end up with something like a 12.733. Double check your calculations. So now I jump into the, into the chi-square table. I look for a 12.733, a left-tailed test. So when I do that, uh, and the degree of freedom is 23, let me take my table out right here. So df equals 23. I'm looking for a 12.733. To me, it looks like it falls between a 0 0.975 and a 0 0.95. 975 and a point. 95 since it is left tailed remember left tailed is always where we subtract from 1 so my p value is going to be somewhere be between 0 0.025 and 0 0.05 and i compare that to alpha so remember that whole thing if your p value is greater than your alpha, it goes into the non-critical area. So let's see, here's my chi-square. My alpha on this left tail test is 0 0.05. So alpha equals 0 0.05. My area for my p-value is somewhere between 0 0.025 and 0 0.05. If I were to draw that in there, that would be contained within that alpha area. So therefore, it's going to be a reject H sub O. Remember, we compare P and alpha. My P value is less than or equal to my alpha. And if it is, it's all contained in that rejection region. So if I reject H sub O, and I forgot to jot down that my claim was H sub 1, 
That means there is enough evidence to support the claim that the average time for a oil change is less than 16.8 minutes. Don't forget to write that summary just for the sake of time and your sanity. I'm not going to do that. However, I think we got this. That is it for section 8.5. Um, thanks for hanging in there. This is all the hypothesis testing that we do. We end with chi-square. In the next section, we bring together um, hy hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. Have a great one. I'll see you next time.